Are we all comfortable? Then let's continue. You remember in the last episode, Bellasini had just found Gran's mysterious second gift, a beautiful golden book. After seeing the book, which he had been searching for for 50 years, Gran decided it was time to tell Bellasini the story of her life. Many years ago, when I was not much older than you are now, I worked as a lab assistant for a brilliant scientist named Einstein. During that time, I was constantly amazed by his ideas and experiments to improve life on Earth. His last and most secret experiment was a machine that he thought would demonstrate there were no bounds to time, space or other worlds. Everything was going fantastically well with the experiment until they used one of his earlier discoveries, E equals MC squared, to construct a nuclear bomb, which had the potential to destroy life on Earth. Over the next few years, he watched in horror as the world made bigger and bigger bombs. He lost faith in the world during those years. So... Fearing that the same powerful men might use his new invention to enter and destroy other worlds, he decided to stop all work on the project. One morning, he came into the laboratory and told us to dismantle the time-space machine he had built after we had finished lunch that day. I was very young and thought it would be silly to end the project before we had at least tried it. My love of adventure was like yours is now, princess. So, fearing I would never get another chance, I hid until all the staff had left for lunch and started the machine. As it slowly came to life, it filled the laboratory with all the colours of a rainbow. At first, I was frightened, but the warm lights of the machine appeared to be beckoning me to step through the gateway it had created. So, I did. As I stepped through, all the physical objects within the laboratory seemed to melt away. For a second, there was nothing. Everything, and I mean everything, had disappeared. Then, in a brilliant burst of colour and light, new objects began to take shape around me. Objects of such colour and beauty, the likes of which I had only ever seen before in my most vivid dreams. So you were transported to a dream world, Gran, interrupted Bellasini. No, princess, it was very real. The kingdom of Batasia. I enjoyed thousands of wonderful adventures there for what seemed to be about ten years. However, when I returned to reality, for some strange reason, only a few seconds had passed. Wow, that's fantastic, Gran. Tell me everything that happened there. Please, please, pleaded Bellasini. It would take me a lifetime to tell you it all, Princess. Besides, I have already told you much of what happened there in my stories each day. However, what I have never told you is that I eventually met and married a handsome young prince who was later crowned the king of Vatasia. So Grandpa was a king? And you, Grand, you were a queen? And you, my beautiful granddaughter, are a princess. Her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Bellasini of Vatasia. So why did you come back, Gran? Why didn't you stay with Grandpa? asked Bellasini. The look on Gran's face quickly turned to one of despair. Grandpa had a powerful ambassador named Glitch, who was his advisor on all matters before I met him. He became very jealous when the king began to discuss affairs of the kingdom with me rather than him. He was a very crafty man 
who was smart enough to realize the only thing I really missed in reality was my mother. So one day, Glitch tricked me into believing that he had received an urgent message passed through the gateway from Professor Einstein, saying that my mother was dying of grief and asking for my return. Tears began to form in Graham's beautiful green eyes as she continued. I hadn't seen my mother for 10 years and I missed her so much. She was not very well when I left reality, so even though in my head I knew Glitch was probably up to no good, my heart left me no other choice than to return to reality. I knew if I told the king, he would worry about my safety and talk me out of returning. So I mapped out a plan to slip back through the gateway during the night without anyone knowing. I thought once I got home, I could convince my mother to return through the porthole with me to Vitasia. So that evening, I got changed back into my old work clothes and slipped out of the palace. The only one who knew I was leaving was my good friend Zack, continued Gran, looking at an old pencil drawing of a small bird hanging above the fireplace. Who's Zack? asked Bellasini. He's the most mischievous little bird you will ever meet in your entire life, replied Gran with a smile. But he was also my most loyal and trusted friend. So what happened next? I went back to the exact spot in Vitasia where the machine had delivered me 10 years earlier and stepped through the shimmering portal. Vitasia instantly disappeared like a dream that never was and I was returned to the cold grey surroundings of the empty laboratory in reality. However, there was not a single worker anywhere to be seen. I didn't realise it then but time had stood still in reality while I was gone. I knew something was wrong, but I was so concerned about getting home to see my mother that I did not even give it a second thought. I rushed home as fast as my feet could carry me. As I opened the front door and saw my mother, I couldn't hold back my tears. She, of course, wondered what all the fuss was about. It was only then I learned that it was still the very same day as when I had left for work 10 years earlier. So why didn't you just go back, asked Bellasini. I got to work very early the next day, but it was too late. Einstein had already dismantled the gateway and destroyed its plans. No one at the lab, not even Einstein, believed my story. They all thought it was a crazy dream so they refused to rebuild it for me. After a few weeks, I realized that I would never see my husband or Vitasia again. Although sometimes I can still catch a glimpse of them in my deepest dreams.